Aloha. It's September the 22nd, 2021. It's Wednesday, it's 11 o'clock. That can mean only one thing. It's time for What Now America. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host, and today's title of the show is Crisis Management Required for the Biden Administration. Right now, in the last week, week and a half, uh, President Biden and his administration has been, uh, been delivered a whole host of what CNN uh, reporter called them headaches. Well, I take issue with that word headaches because they seem more like disasters and calamities. But be as it may, they've all ended up on Joe Biden's desk. And the question is, what is he going to do about it? What sort of things have landed on his desk? Well, number one, we have uh, had 14,000 Haitians under a bridge called the Rio, um, the Rio uh, Del Rio Bridge in Texas. And I understand we're down to about 10,000 um, Haitians uh, under that bridge. Uh, talk about a, a, a public relations nightmare, the, the visuals and photos we've seen of, of agents on horseback. And um, it's just not a good visual. And that's what's been going on. We also have the GOP that seems to be losing sight of um, what's going on with our national debt and our debt ceiling. They have uh, pledged that they are not going to renew uh, the, the budget. And uh, that comes to a head on Thursday. And if it's not resolved by mid-October, the United States will fail to pay its debts. And that means a whole host of issues, not to mention a, um, a stock market that'll crash like we've never seen in a long time. We also have an infrastructure bill that's falling apart. We have the progressive Democrats who, about 95 of them, who do not want to um, pass the infrastructure, the bipartisan infrastructure bill. They want to have the entire uh, package, both packages to be passed. And it seems to be my way or the highway on that. We also have the, um, the problem with France and how they were pushed aside for the uh, contract with Australia on, on uh, uh, submarines. They've, they've retracted their two diplomats from the United States. We have 675,000 dead Americans due to the uh, COVID pandemic. And uh, the half the country or a third of the country is still resistant for getting the vaccine. So that number continue, continues to climb on Joe Biden's watch. We have the fact that um, the booster shots that Joe Biden promised for all Americans, the third booster shot, uh, has been retracted. It's now been recommended by uh, the FDA is that 65 years or older. So there's some egg on Joe Biden's face on that point. And not to mention the, uh, the calamity, the, 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 the tragedy that took place in Afghanistan where Joe Biden said, we're going to uh, extract, extract revenge on ISIS. And lo and behold, we had a drone strike that killed 11, um, what was thought to be ISIS members. Turns out it was a family, and some of, seven of them were children. So let me introduce my guests before we go any further, Jay Fidel and Winston Welch. Good morning. Good morning, Jim. Uh, you know, Jay, this is just a partial list of what has fallen upon Joe Biden's desk. And I guess the question to you is, which one needs to be resolved at first, or um, do all of them need to be resolved right now? <clears throat> Let me connect the dots for a minute. Um, you know, this is, this is the Trump legacy, either directly or indirectly. Um, now, we had some problems, many problems, built into the country before Trump, but he exacerbated them. And he intentionally, I mean, this is all being rolled out now, he intentionally left landmines and booby traps um, and um, you know, made transition, a, a reasonable transition impossible for Biden. Uh, and and uh, although they're not all directly in that line, um, they're all directly or indirectly a result of the legacy that Trump left, every one of them. And you could connect them up to Trump. And so, what, you know, what Trump is doing directly or through his, um, um, his, his minions in the Republican Party, is he trying to undermine Biden, make Biden look bad. And Biden, you know, may or may not have the, what do you want to call it, the negotiation skills, the management skills, the force of personality, the staff um, to deal with these things. So... It seems to be accelerating. It's, it, it, the, the notion that Biden is not capable of managing all these things, and these things are getting worse. Um, you ask me which one is the one most important now. 
My God, that's a hard question, Tim. Did you mean that to be as hard yes. a question? That is, yes, I a, did. That's a really hard <laughs> question. Well, the first thing, okay, is this crazy thing about the debt ceiling. Why, why, why in the world is McConnell and the Republican Party saying they're not going to lift the debt ceiling? Um, what do they get out of that except a disaster? The you want to? You want to? Go ahead. I'll get, I got a quick, quick answer on that. Is it will now look like the Republicans are the fiscally conservative and concerned about national debt, and it makes the Democrats look like wild spend spending maniacs at uh, you know a holiday store shopping. Well, my, my recollection is the bill to lift the debt ceiling doesn't lift it for all the money that Biden wants to spend, only, uh, you know, the regular money, the, the regular debt. So uh, if, if the public believes uh, that McConnell is trying to head off to 3.5 trillion, that's not it. He's, and he's taking action that already makes us look bad um, to wit Biden's speech at the United Nations we look really bad. We look out of control, careening toward an economic disaster domestically and in terms of uh, our foreign, our policy, uh, foreign policy and our, uh, you know, our image around the world. Even, even if this gets saved at the last minute, Biden has already suffered in his reputation and the way people feel about him. And that's, um, that's Trump's uh, desire. That's uh, McConnell's desire. That's the Republican desire. Make them look bad. Make them look bad on everything. Yeah. It already does. So, but I think that you know <clears throat> he's going to look really, really, really bad um, if the debt ceiling isn't lifted, and if we default on our national debt, and if the world takes a look at us and says, you know, this the United States is not capable of managing its affairs. Maybe we ought to change the reserve currency. We're going to find some other currency in the world instead of the American dollar. We are falling from our position of leadership every day. Well, so that's the one that I pick as the most. Yeah, I think dangerous. that's a good one to pick, Jay, because you know the full faith and credit of the United States has been golden for many, many decades, um, if not centuries. And and the bottom line is the reason people flock to our dollar and flock to our our treasuries is because they know they'll get paid back without worrying about it. And if that were to default, um, can you imagine? the flee and flight from our bonds and what that would do to interest rates, uh, not to mention the stock market and all the, um, all the other. No, it's indices. already suffering. It's already suffering just in the prospect of it. Just by the you discussion. Know, not, not, only the, not only the U.S. bonds, but all the bonds, not only the bonds, but the stock. Um, we, we're, we're on a slide right now. Well, let's just take a look at some of the specifics if the United States were to default. Um, we would no longer see money to federal employees. We would no longer see Medicare benefits. Can you imagine social, social security checks not being paid out? Can you imagine that the military not get their wages? So social security is supposed to be a separate fund. I'm not sure that would be included in a failure of the debt ceiling. Okay, that's very possible. Uh, tax refunds would cease and federal contractors would not be paid. Um, that's just the beginning of it, of the slide. So is this a game of chicken or is like, you know, we've, we've, we've been shut down before and the GOP has been directly responsible for those previous shutdowns, the last two at least. Um, I, I'm reading reports that Mitch McConnell means business. What do you think? Well, I'm, 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 I'm here to tell you, Mitch McConnell is just negotiating. He's going to try to extract promises from Biden. He's going to try to make Biden look foolish. It's going to be a midnight solution. And Biden will have to capitulate on a number of issues. And only then will McConnell let the debt ceiling go, I mean, higher. Um, so uh, we're all watching the strategies here. And I think we're going to be disappointed in, in the strength of Biden's negotiating skills. Okay, thank you, Jay. Winston, of the, um, <laughs> the many things that I mentioned on Biden's desk right now, in your opinion, which one is the most critical that needs to be addressed uh, immediately? Boy, it's a it, there's a smorgasbord, isn't there? It's uh, hard to hard to tell which way to look because any way he looks, and I agree with Jay, a lot of this was inherited, not all of it. I mean, having uh, you know ten thousand Haitians showing up on the Texas border, um, the immigration issue's been going on for a very long time. 
anything where there's immediate human suffering obviously is is a need that needs to be addressed right away and how this is being handled or not handled um you know that that's one thing that's obvious okay to that point to that point didn't uh, president biden appoint vice president harris to handle that handle the uh, immigration and the border crisis uh she seems to be mia your opinion she does seem to be mia and i think that she realizes that it doesn't matter which way she turns or how she goes on this it'll be it'll backfire on her uh and, and there's not a good solution right now and that's why we haven't we haven't had anything on immigration really for whatever so-called immigration reform we have um it, it's just booby trapped all the way around so i i don't envy anyone who's got the uh, uh the, that job especially her and that's just sort of of all the things that she should be doing i don't know that that's the the one that she's going to be the most successful at but um you know there's there's other forces at play here obviously as jay said the, the a lot of this mess has been inherited but the other thing like the uh, this new security pact with australia and and uh the uk interesting isn't it and that the french are recalling their ambassador from america when was the last time that happened i never never remember that happening um i think it was life. i think it was louis the 16th it was something like that. These are this is our um, right, original partner in liberté, égalité, and fraternité, and uh, so they're they're angry, and uh, you know the, it just gives more um, fuel to the Europeans need to figure out their own security solutions. And then you got the people in Japan and Korea and Taiwan just wondering, uh, okay, it's it's this uh, sort of shaking up the. It, we didn't need this right now. And I realize the French are especially mad because they didn't get to sell their submarines. And does Australia need nuclear submarines? Apparently so. Um, but it, it it calls into question a lot of uh, these basic um, trustworthiness elements of the United well, States. Well, you know, the basic idea, let me jump in to say the basic idea was good. Let's get together with Australia. Let's get together with the UK. We'll have a, a group of three uh, and we'll be much more influential in Asia <clears throat> and with submarines. And China and China will see that as a as a threat and uh, as a moderating force in the balance of power in Asia. All true, all good, smart. But Jay, he, he just, wait, 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 wait. Let me finish. But he forgot something. This is just like Afghanistan. It was right to to leave Afghanistan, but he forgot something. He forgot a couple hundred thousand, you know, refugees. So the same thing here. He forgot to pick up the phone and call Macron. Um, and that that was a serious error. So so while he might have, while Joe Biden might have succeeded in a coup in, in that tripartite agreement about Australia, instead, uh, he loses. Instead, he's got egg on his face because he forgot something. Jay, do you really think he forgot? Do you think that his aides or his advisors um, just forgot all about France and the implications and ramifications? of kicking them out of the deal and bringing in the United Kingdom? Well, um, you know, there is the possibility that he told them. There is the possibility that he had some, what do you want to call it, um, um, argument type, argumentative calls with them to tell them he was moving on. Uh, there is a possibility of that. Um, and that it wasn't a complete surprise. And they're reacting not only from what he did, um, but the way he handled those telephone calls, I, I don't know. That's a wild guess. But bottom line, though, is um, I think he could have done better on this. I think he could have shown a little more respect to France, which has been an ally of ours uh, you know, from the beginning. And uh, it's really tragic that uh, what could have been a coup, I mean, a, a good strategical coup turned out to be, you know, a mess. Okay, thank you, Jay. Winston, um, what I, I'm not sure I got the answer I was looking for. Which one, which one of these uh, calamities do you think needs uh, immediate attention? What's the, the the priority? Honestly, all of them. He he has <laughs> a to do answer. all of them at the same time. But like Jay <laughs> said, he's he's facing a hollowed out um, administrative structure with so many pe good people having left in the prior four years because they couldn't take it anymore. 
I mean, it's so many senior people in the State Department left. So whatever back channels are, and, and I don't know about our military ties, but uh, when you had the pres former president saying, you know, questioning the value of NATO, um, that's got to put people on edge. What I, I think probably would have been smarter if you were looking at a more comprehensive security system was sell the French submarines to the Australians. The French have a history of, uh, you know, in, in that area of the world as well, translate the manuals into English. But there was more there was more to it than meets the eye that we will never be a party of or know about. But this uh, it, it's it's a strange sort of alliance. It's, it goes beyond the former five eyes, you know, uh, agreement that, that was traditionally would have included New Zealand and Canada. So um, we'll find out more about this. This has obviously been brewing for a long time. And I think that this probably would have happened uh, under Donald Trump uh, as much as Joe Biden. Honestly, I, I don't see that that was this is not just something they just uh, came up with. I would just guess what is more concerning is what we've heard from uh, these books that are coming out increasingly that Dan Quayle was called by by um, Mike Pence to see what he should do. This was uh, a little bit more scary than we realized because he's really kind of looking at what could I get away with and what um, what do I really need to do here? And Dan Quayle looks to be the uh, the hero of the day saying you need to follow the law and don't skirt it. But when you really look at the law, it could have been that Dan, that uh, Mike Pence said, uh, this is how I'm interpreting this particular clause. Is, is it the uh, the 14th Amendment or, or uh, that that gives him these powers or whatever, whatever amendment that is? where he could have set off a real crisis and he didn't and thank goodness he got some solid advice from uh dan quayle i can't remember where dan quayle was from wasn't he from indiana or uh, uh yeah yeah I, so so he uh you know and had been in the same shoes he was actually at one point i think the top fundraiser for the republican party as much as he couldn't spell potato at least he got it right on this one and uh you know this was uh the one where he really needed to get it right and i'm glad that mike pence reached out for his his can i call a friend um uh, when facing the donald who now told him that they can't be friends anymore because he wouldn't overturn the election so while he lost one friend at least he had some backup from other traditional sources of sanity inside of the you know former republican party and uh that actually was quite concerning and we're going to get more details you know, I, on that i couldn't agree with you more i i don't think americans realize just how close it came to a, a constitutional crisis and a, a moment of potential insurrection uh that went way beyond the insurrection of the capitol um but we know, didn't I mean, show what but the good news was we didn't have a huge showing up of people on September, uh, what was it, the 18th? Or, 18th or, yeah. It, it, you had five times more security uh, personnel there than people who actually showed up. So while people may believe this election was stolen or fraudulent or, or whatever, um, they're realizing, okay, we're just going to live with it for a few more years. And Joe Biden is stumbling hard on a lot of these things, um, you know, on COVID kind of pre pre announcing that we were going to make this vaccine available that made it seem like this was a political thing like Donald Trump had done rather than say we're going to wait for the CDC and the FDA to come out with their rules because that caused a little bit of uh you know there's a kerfluffle there and uh as it turns out you know it'll probably be something similar to what uh Joe Biden wants and he wants to end this pandemic so while he's come out with some strong statements saying if you work for the government, if you are contracting with the government, if you have more than 100 people, those sorts of things that are actually meaningful. Um, he stumbled on that in that other way. And, uh, you know, he's just got to keep on plotting. Through. He has such a mess to deal with. It's like it's like a flood hit the house. And which yeah. room do you what what do you want to save first? You know, how, how, how do you start to clean up? Uh, it's, it's all over the place. I want to ask you something, Winston, is, you know, there's one one bullet point I didn't mention in my introduction. That is, we now have this um, this thing called the Havana Syndrome that has hit all our diplomats when they were in Cuba. And now it's hit the um, one of the top administrators for the CIA chief who in India was hit with this uh, Havana Syndrome, which is to say some sort of weapon, be it radio, fre radio frequency or sound or whatever. 
that uh, is giving our personnel um, basically traumatic brain injuries. And so the, if the CIA chief's a top assistant got hit with it, and then of course uh, Kamala Harris had to uh, rearrange her trip because her, her aides were hit with it in Vietnam, um, it basically is saying, we don't know who's hitting us. We don't know how they're hitting us. So there is another element of um, America being caught flat-footed and not knowing what to do. Uh, your thoughts about the Havana syndrome attacks? You know, we uh, obviously there's something there's something to this. I don't think it's a, a kind of a mass hysteria, but uh, it, it, there there seems to be some physical or electrical um, culprit behind this, and uh, it would make sense. You know, there's if you can disrupt somebody's intelligence operations or um, uh, diplomatic capabilities, it's you know there's some some obvious uh, contestants there of who would want to see that happen. But uh, hopefully they will they'll figure it out sooner than later. Um, you know, that it's not it's not hitting. That's not the that's not the priority in all of the stuff that, that we've been given. I mean, when you've got 10,000 people under a bridge in Texas, that's a priority to me, even just from a visual optics point of view, uh, if not the real humanitarian suffering, which is which is the point. And also that our borders are. Uh, you know, the wall doesn't work. How, how do we, how do we, I would say helping these nations so that they don't want to have to escape and leave their own nation to try and make their way to America. The stories are harrowing when you, when you read about it. These other things that we've got out there, COVID still, we're, we're still under lockdown here in Hawaii. Basically, we can have five or 10 people at a meeting. That's it. Our football games, we can't go to a football game, but we've reached a very high percentage of the people that can be vaccinated are vaccinated. So this is, it's changing here. We are seeing that it's becoming a, um, an epidemic of the unvaccinated. People are getting the message now that they have to be vaccinated here or maybe for their jobs uh, due to federal or uh, local requirements. We're seeing that change. And I'm feeling a, a change coming up here that people have, have decided I need to get this because I want to go to the store. I want to go to the movies. And and it's not going to end with the 18th of October or whenever it was just extended to. This is just a way of life for us. And it just is saying you have a responsibility to your society as well uh, if you want to be a full participant in the society. And I understand that people feel like it's going to morph into some sort of uh, government ID where you have to flash it at every turn. But the reality is this is a real epidemic with real people. The mayor has stated that he's uh, going back to hospital utilization rates as the primary um, uh, indicator of, of how he's going to move. As far as nationally goes, um, you know, we have states with incredibly varied uh, vaccination rates. And and you had the governor of what was it, Mississippi or Alabama saying he wouldn't change a thing. So you've got that thrown in the mix, too, uh, an incredible hubris of um and 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 willful ignorance, uh, really, you know, shameful uh, that that these folks are are getting sick and infected, and that they're not really doing much at all to try and stop that on that level. Um, Joe Biden, I think, is basically um, doing a, a good job on COVID. Again, it, it's we he, no one predicted Delta. Um, what's next? Maybe there's oh, but he's reversed his position over the uh, booster, and that is a very serious um, mistake. Another mistake. You know, He's, he says one thing, and the CDC says another thing, and the public out there is all confused. Yes, and the Republicans are saying he doesn't know which end is up, does he? Well, another he was mistake by gun. Joe Biden. He was jumping the gun with that, and he probably yeah, yeah. should have just waited. And that's why he was waiting. Remember, the, there was a pressure on him of saying, uh, "When are we going to get the this?" I, I, I forgive him. On emergency use. Yes. I forgive right? him. And, you forgive him. Hey, Jay he forgives him, but there's 70 million base people who don't forgive him. They're going to capitalize on that. Hey, that, Jay, if this was the Trump administration and this happened to Donald Trump, would that be about a two hour headline? Because we're on to the next uh, fiasco that Donald Trump perpetrated in this country. Are we are we having double standards on how how harshly we're treating Joe Biden versus all the crazy uh, mistakes that Donald Trump made? And, uh, we focused in on it for days now on, on this booster uh, 
you know, this flub up. Um, that's, that's what happens when you bring, um, you know, um, I don't know, what's your phrase again? A, uh, <clears throat> a soup ladle to a knife fight. Um, th those guys are going to try to undermine him in every single way they can. It's relentless. And if you ask me my takeaway, my takeaway is it's going to get worse. <clears throat> He's going to make mistakes. Uh, there are more booby traps and landmines in store for him. There are more geopolitical issues for him. Things are going to happen. They're not going to be good things. He's going to be blamed for them. The GOP will blame him for everything with the specific and relentless intention of having him lose in 2022 and 2024 and getting back into majority in Congress and getting a Republican uh, in the White House. And, and I think if you ask me my prediction, I think that's where we're going. It would be remarkable, wouldn't it, guys? Wouldn't it be remarkable if he could, um, <clears throat> if he could change the direction of this, have some real wins, have a win with McConnell, a win with Congress, a win with all those half dozen major initiatives that are stuck in Congress, a win with his own party. He's not having those wins. Yeah. You know, it, you mentioned the GOP having plenty of ammunition to criticize Joe Biden, and I agree. Uh, they've got more than enough Christmas presents under their, uh, uh, their doorstep to take on Joe Biden and his administration. But here's one that the Democrats may not forget. Um, and it, this item came up as we were discussing things. Uh, the parliamentarian said that uh, the dreamers won't be able to um, entertain any kind of uh, um, bailout in the bill, in the um, reconciliation bill, that that's been excluded. And wasn't that a big part, Jay, of, of, of President Biden's um, campaign promise to address those dreamers in our country, the many thousands of them? And um, now that seems to be out, out of the... Um, the sequence we're trying to address it in, in the legislature. The, the, the question for the parliamentarian was whether the elements of the bill affect the budget, the fisc, you know, um, and, and frankly, the dreamers don't affect the fisc. You can't make a connection. It's not a money bill. It's not a money provision. So, um, okay, it's not a surprise that the parliamentarian said no to that. It can't, it can't go with, uh, with that bill. <clears throat> On the other hand, let me ask you a rhetorical question. Don't you think that Joe Biden and his advisors could have figured that out in advance? They knew they were taking a risk here. Whether it's popular or not is not the test. The test is whether it's a money bill, and it's not. So what you're saying is it's a self-inflicted injury against well, his credibility. I, 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 yeah, he was, he was not being realistic. He was a dreamer in his own way. Good, great point. Excellent point. Um, Winston, we've, once again, we've run out of time. Uh, 28 minutes just isn't enough to tackle all the things that were on the topic for today. But uh, your last thoughts on where Joe Biden is and what he might do, and your last thoughts about where we go for next week. Okay. Joe Biden is a decent, honorable fellow. He has inherited a massive massive mess whether it didn't matter how you look at what he inherited he's been on the job barely been on the job he's with with half the people thinking that's not their legitimate president um or whatever it is the base 78 percent uh jay calls them the the 70 80 million He's only been on the job eight months. This is a huge ship that has taken a lot of damage, no matter how you slice it or dice it or what angle you look at it from. And he is now that it it didn't it didn't end right. Uh, it, you know, this is like basically he inherited a post Pearl Harbor type of situation. The damage has been done. What do you do from here? It we didn't win the war in a day. It took a long time because we had to repair the damage. We had to refloat the boats. We had to start rebuilding things and, and infrastructure and, and, and calling up the troops in the whole nine yards. And that's what he's facing right now is we're just still, some of these are, yes, missteps, absolutely. But the rest of it, he had enough just as it was, and he's still going to have more of that to go. So we got to cut the man a little bit of slack as much as we can. Um, as a nation and realize he's doing the best he can with what he's got. He's sane, 
he's rational, he's not a sociopath, he, he's not a psychopath. He is the president of the United States who's inherited a huge mess. And he, we have to put our faith in him that he will get us out of it because he, uh, you know, he's the best chance we got for it. And he's the only chance we got for it, actually, at this point. And so, uh, you know, fair enough to call him out on the things that uh, they need. And they know this very well. But uh, he is um, his task before him is is um, incredible. It's monumental. It's heroic if he's able to pull off half of what he needs to pull off to to right this ship and to and to get us into safer harbor. Okay, Winston. You know, Winston, I always feel a little bit better after your final closing comments after every show we do, and you haven't disappointed me in the least. So thank you so much for your words. Um, I feel better. Jake, your turn. Are you gonna make me feel better? No, I'm not. I don't intend to make you feel better. I'm sorry, Tim. Okay. You know, Tim, you and I and Winston, we would like to see Biden succeed. We recognize as Biden says he's he's a decent man trying to do a good job. <clears throat> but <clears throat> there are problems. And he has made mistakes that have been catapulted into the stratosphere, that have been capitalized on by the Republicans every day, and by the way, by the media too. He's raw meat almost every day these days. <clears throat> and it's not only that he's got, you know, X tens of millions of people who are trying to attack him at every turn. Um, he's got the media against him. And even though us three, we're not against him, we want to see him prevail. The, the net effect of all of this is that he looks impotent and not quite competent, not strong enough, not strategic enough um, to keep on trucking. And there's a fair chance he's gonna lose in 2020. The Democrats are gonna lose in 2022 and 2024, and we're gonna be facing Republicans. That's why, if you ask me whether I agree with Biden about not changing the filibuster, I don't. He's got a majority now. Let's see some action, boys. He's got his own attorney general. Let's see some action, boys. We don't have that. You made me feel better anyway. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> I, we've run out of time. I'd like to thank my guests, Jay Fidel, Winston Welch, I'm Tim Apicelli, your host for What Now America. Won't you please join us next week, Wednesday at 11 o'clock. Until then, aloha.